What is your message to Joseph Odding today? I, if he's here, I, I would love to see him. Um, if Joseph Odding is back there, let's bring him out. Is if he here Elvis yet? is here, bring him out. Oh! There he is. Come on. <laughs> hey, Anna. How are you? Good to see you. I would tell you, you don't see that very often, a hug from one agency to another agency. We need another chair. Yeah. No, he can stand. <laughs> he gets paid more than us. Hi, How are you? All is well? Yeah. So how often do you all actually talk to each other? And by the way, we don't see this very often. I know you have the FDIC meetings. I got that. But in an informal setting, we don't see this very often in Washington, D.C. Y'all actually like each other. Well, not only do we, I'll have to tell you what Joseph Fodding did to yeah. me. About two weeks ago, he was um, someplace in Nevada. Uh, at a charity oh, event, and, and, uh, at a charity event, it was a personal okay. thing, and he, he texts me and says, hey, can I get you, um, are you a visor person or a baseball hat person? I was like, oh, probably a baseball hat person. <laughs> He's like, what color? I'll bring you a gift. And I said, I don't know, what are my choices? So he takes a picture of, of the choices in the gift shop. You've been there before. Okay. And he, uh, I'm like, well, I'm actually a bucket hat person. Charity event, yeah. Uh, so anyhow, yeah. so he buys me a bucket hat, he puts it in a confidential envelope, delivers the envelope to me at the uh, uh, BSA anti-money laundering meeting, says, don't open until you get home. I get home. He, it's a beautiful hat, but you know what he did? In the back of the hat, he put the OCC pin. <laughs> oh. So I called it the OCC's Trojan horse. He wants me to go around the DC with another regulator's pin in my head, yeah. And at one time, you guys were talking to each other weekly. Does that we still, still do. Happen? We still, several times a week. Several times a week. He's, well, on, he's on my once a week. He's at, yeah. at, at, formally once a week. Right. He's a pain, you know. <laughs> he's on my board. Well, how know that she could have just picked her up today and brought exactly. her over. Exactly. Oh, that. he has a hybrid vehicle. <laughs> she wants to know if you. Which she, is why he takes a long time getting anywhere. She. She wants to know if you make brownies. Uh, I don't make brownies, and I have never been a recipient of brownies. But, so uh, hold on, hold on. Oh. <laughs> Well, you gave me an OCC pin in the head. I mean, <laughs> the, uh, um, I'd just like to say that, you know, I'm a better regulator than Joseph Potting. I would agree with that. You would agree to that. <laughs> now, you kind. had a head You're start on her. And she, she, you know, politely mentioned you had started the CRA before she was around. So you're making progress together on this. I think so. I think yeah. so a lot. Um, we're uh, excited about where we are with CR. We, I think everybody knows we did the AMPR. We got 1,500 comments. Um, and why don't you tell him? You read every single, he read yes, every single yeah. comment letter himself. Well, we, I told him that's crazy. Which I thought it was crazy. important. Um, but we did meet this week and we talked about it and uh, the principals were all going to meet on April 11th and start uh, mapping out the NPR, which I'm, I'm, I think the industry will be really excited about the direction we're taking. What's interesting is you mentioned small dollar quite a bit and about your personal story. One of the reasons you came to D.C. was to do small dollar lending as well. That's right. So it's great. So what, what's your personal story about small dollar lending? Was that when you were a banker at U.S. Bank? He gives me it? small dollar loans. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I think if you go back to 2013 when the regulators in conjunction with the legislators kind of forced banks out of that space, mm -hmm. um, my viewpoint was in talking to a lot of community groups is we ended up with, if you go into low to moderate income areas, what are the thriving businesses, pawn shops, payday lenders, um, uh, check cashers, and a lot of that was because people were forced out of the banking industry for that product and they had to go to alternative sources, which generally were always the worst. And my viewpoint is, who's the best organizations to be able to provide that service? It's banks. And so Great. banks can't serve 100% of the market, but they should be serving a significant portion of that. And the beauty of that is banks can be a stair step back into mainstream banking if they offer that product. But I think the other byproduct, which we... This was my session. Oh, yes. Excuse me. Your time is up. Yes. All Zero right. Points. My time Zero. is up. <laughs> you do have to go to San Francisco. I do. Thank you very much Thank for you. joining CBA. Really appreciate it. All right. Yelena McWilliams. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.